Do you recall a night you had where, no matter how hard you tried, you just could not sleep? One of those nights where sleep was just within your grasp, but somehow always avoiding you. If you have, you will know that it can be a truly dreadful experience, and one that can automatically ruin your day. But what if every night you had was that night? Imagine that, with each passing day, you slowly see yourself becoming increasingly restless, and in turn, seeing your sanity deteriorate little by little. Days become weeks, and weeks become months, and yet the only change that will take place is that this agonizing condition will worsen. What I just described to you is a small glimpse of what it's like to experience one of the most terrifying and chilling illnesses to have ever been discovered, fatal insomnia. What seems like a phenomenon so horrifying that it could only be from a Stephen King novel was in fact very real, and it's one of the worst fates anyone could have the misfortune to experience. So today, let's explore the true terror of having the disease that will never allow you to sleep again. But before we delve into today's topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. To start off, what exactly is fatal insomnia? Well, this disease, properly known as fatal familial insomnia, is a brain disease that is classified as a transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, or a prion disease. A prion is a misshapen pathogenic protein that can cause other proteins to become misshapen and lose their functionality. Fatal insomnia is caused by a kind of mutation known as a D178N mutation in the PRNP prion gene, leading to the production of the prion responsible for this illness. This mutation is autosomal dominant, which means that the genes that express this trait are on a non-sex chromosome, and that only one copy of the trait is needed for this condition to become expressed. This means that those with the gene will, without exception, get the condition at some point. This disease will typically get expressed around the ages of 45 to 50 in those who carry the gene. Fatal insomnia occurs in two forms, fatal familial and fatal sporadic insomnia. Fatal familial is the result of the previously described genetic mutation. A fatal sporadic insomnia results from the mutation at codon 178 in the PRNP gene. The mutation changes the DNA base pairs from GAC to AAC, which causes a completely different amino acid to be built, and thus causes the proteins to become misshapen. This specific mutation is known for being problematic, as it is directly linked with the presence of another brain-related illness, Crotchfeld-Jacobs disease. Although fatal insomnia, specifically fatal familial insomnia, was first officially described in 1986 by Dr. Elio Lugaresi and his colleagues, it was not the first time that this disease was recognized. The first ever description of someone having this condition dates back to 1765, with the victim being an unnamed Italian man. Initially, the slow degradation of the thalamus and the motor system, which results in the loss of balance, is the major telltale sign of the disease's presence. This is because the thalamus is a major controller of our sleep patterns, and it heavily influences our circadian rhythms. This degeneration takes place throughout the disease's course, from onset until death, which can take anywhere from seven months to two and a half years before a patient finally succumbs to the illness. With that said, what does the disease do to a victim exactly? Let's detail the progression of FFI, which occurs in four distinct stages. In stage one, we see that the initial onset of insomnia takes place, and it gets worse over the next few months. This leads to panic attacks, paranoia, and increased phobias. Some have experienced lucid dreaming, though this isn't a symptom that's seen in everyone. In stage two, insomnia becomes worse and worse. Additionally, psychological symptoms start to become more frequent. The most drastic symptoms include vivid hallucinations and intensive panic attacks. In stage three, Rapid weight loss occurs as a result of the individual's complete inability to sleep. At this stage, we witness total insomnia take place, subsequently leading to the complete disruption of the sleep-wake cycle. In stage 4, over 6 months in, the patient will experience rapid cognitive decline and chronic dementia. Patients will also become unable to voluntarily move or speak, eventually becoming unresponsive until they reach their demise. It's not completely clear as to what causes this brain degeneration, but a theory does exist. One major purpose of sleep in the first place is to clear toxins and other metabolic waste products from the cerebrospinal fluid of the brain, which is done through a complex pathway known as the brain waste removal system. 
This system is most active during slow brainwave activity, or when the body is in a state of deep REM sleep. Having a buildup of these brain waste products, such as a buildup of a protein known as beta amyloid, often leads to improper functionality in different parts of the brain. Slowly having these metabolites saturating the brain's vital fluids will lead to an inevitable and precipitous decline in functionality. You may be wondering if there may be some kind of cure out there for a poor soul who has this condition. Unfortunately, given how rare this condition is, as well as the lack of understanding about this disease, nobody really knows how to cure it. In reality, the best that can be done for such an individual is palliative, supportive care, which can help manage symptoms and make the disease less painful. Such treatments can be sleeping aids or medications, barbiturates, and other medications that can ease physiological symptoms. The good news is that this condition is extraordinarily rare. In fact, only around 40 families are known to even carry the FFI gene in the first place. Most of these families come from European countries, such as Germany, Italy, and France. But four families in America have this disease, as well as one family in Japan. Also, remember when I mentioned that there is no current cure for this disease? Well, that might change really soon. As there are rapid developments occurring in fighting and treating this illness, one potential treatment that's garnered a lot of attention is genetic therapy, an avenue that's shown much promise in being able to overcome this disease. The main idea behind genetic therapy is to replace the faulty genes with new DNA, which will hopefully correct any mistakes caused by the faulty genes. I've laid out how much of a horrific experience it is to have this disease, but the true depth of the agony that results from fatal insomnia is shown when observing how it actually affects an individual. This case study from the New England Journal of Medicine, documented by Dr. Elio Lugaresi himself, will provide clear insight into the kind of suffering one will experience when faced with this illness. This case revolves around a man who comes from a family with a history of this disease, having had many of his family members, including two of his sisters, acquire and then eventually succumb to fatal insomnia themselves. A 53-year-old man was referred to the Neurologic Hospital of the University of Bologna Medical School by one of his relatives, a physician, who had been investigating a peculiar fatal disorder of sleep in the family. The patient's history was unremarkable except for a high blood pressure, which had been treated with beta-blocking drugs since he was 47 years old. At 52 years of age, the patient, who had formerly slept 5 to 7 hours a night and napped for 30 minutes in the afternoon, began to have nocturnal insomnia. Poor sleep was associated with impotence and loss of libido, and, one month later, difficulties in micturition, constipation, and episodes of salivation rhinorrhea, lacrimation, orthostatic diaphoresis, and increased body temperature. Two months later, the patient could sleep for only one hour per night and was frequently disturbed by vivid dreams, during which he would rise from his bed, stand, and give a military salute. When he was awakened by his relatives, he would report dreaming of attending a coronation three months after symptom onset. Normal sleep became impossible for the patient and the dreaming episodes gradually became more frequent. Dysarthria, severe fatigue, and slight pyrexia forced the patient to retire from his work as an industrial manager. Six months after the onset of symptoms, breathing irregularities with apnea, clumsiness of gait, and mild intention tremor of the arms developed, and the sleep and autonomic disturbances worsened. On admission to the hospital, the patient was in good general condition well-oriented, and cooperative. The physical examination revealed slurred speech, small and hyperactive pupils, and brisk, deep tendon reflexes. There is a fine intention tremor of both arms, especially the right. When left alone, the patient would slowly lapse into a stuporous state characterized by dreamlike activity, complex and purposeful gesturing, and noisy and irregular breathing. However, he could be awakened quickly by light stimuli. After discharge, patient's condition worsened. He was no longer able to report his dreams. His motor activity became coarse and tremulous. An urinary urgency, dysphagia, and transient diplopia appeared. On the second admission, one month after the first, patient was presented with meiosis, 
limitation of upward gaze, saccadic ocular movements, marked dysarthria, amnesia, and myoclonic movements of the extremities. Tactile stimuli evoked reflex myoclonus of the lower limbs. He could still be awakened with strong stimuli and cooperated in his neurologic examinations. His speech became unintelligible, and his breathing was noisy and irregular, with frequent apnea. He was disoriented, confused, incontinent, and unable to perform simple tasks. Eight months after the onset of symptoms, the patient had several brief episodes of motor agitation, with screaming, dystonic posturing, and rotation of the trunk towards the right. He became stuporous, but was responsive to intense stimuli, and was more febrile. Severe autonomic instability, respiratory insufficiency, brisk tendon reflexes, and a right Babinski sign were apparent. A right pulmonary infiltration, disclosed on x-ray films, could not be controlled by antibiotics. The patient died nine months after the onset of symptoms. Over the past few months, this channel has covered some extremely disturbing phenomena, but seeing that there exists a disease that robs you of your ability to even rest is probably one of the most horrifying concepts one can imagine. Seeing your own life deteriorate in front of you, unable to fight the inevitable, is a fate that I would not wish upon anybody. I suppose the best we could do now is to try to not lose any sleep over this, while we still can. Hey everybody, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I wanted to just start off by sincerely apologizing for my recent lack of output. To be frank, I've had a lot of BS and just other bad things happen within these past few months, and it's kind of really impacted my output as of late and I've been really feeling just demotivated to work on this channel but I really do want to hop back on the saddle and give you guys the best content possible so if you haven't already be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with any future content that I post. I really want to start posting much more regularly so if you haven't yet please do share what kind of cases or topics you want to see me cover next. All right well without further ado I just wanted to let you guys know to have a great day and to please take care of yourself.